Greetings and salutations, my friends. Welcome back to probably the final Stray Kitten Diaries. Um, the reason I'm doing it in my little cabin here is because uh, I have a problem with my Pixel 2 that um, when sometimes when I record horizontally, because I'm, I'm not an idiot, I don't record vertically, record horizontally, the video then comes out vertically. And there doesn't seem to be a fix for it. It seems to be a random bug that only a few people get. I could convert it and rotate it, but then the quality looks terrible and stuff. So I thought I'll just what I recorded about an hour ago, I'll put up there so you can watch as we as we chat. Um, the cats are doing amazingly well. They're sort of 12 weeks old now. They've come on leaps and bounds. I've tried to do everything to get them acclimatized for a new home. So as well as, as you can see in the video, we've given them um, what is supposed to be a dining room, but it's basically just a storage room for all the random stuff we've got and everything, my old desk and everything. We, they needed a bit more space because they're getting a bit bigger now. So we've let them that. So they've gone around and broken everything and <laughs> climbed everything and ripped one of the curtains off the walls. All that stuff kittens do. Um, but I'm got, we've got them used to humans. As soon as you go in now, all four of them are just all cuddly and everything. Um, I've also like done hoovering in front of them just so they get used to the sights and sounds of houses, really. And they've been introduced to the dogs and all that sort of good stuff. Um, and we've sexed them officially now because they're a bit older, so they're easier to sex. So I can confirm that Jared Bowen is a girl, as we suspected. Harry Owen is a boy. And the two black ones, which we've now named Baba and Dee Dee because I can't tell them apart, they are both girls as well. Um, so really good. I'm really chuffed with how they've developed. They look healthy. They look perfectly ready to be rehomed. Over the course of the next couple of weeks, we're going to try and either find a local charity, a little shelter that will get them rehomed, or we might have to do it ourselves, which will be a pain in the bum, but we'll get through that. Um, I'll probably talk to the local vet about advertising and stuff. Um, but if there is anybody in Northern Ireland that wants a cat, um, don't take the decision lightly. It's a serious commitment. But if you are in Northern Ireland and fancy driving down to pick one up, free of charge, um, you are most welcome to... Um, I will give you a mini interview because I don't want you being some random dude. But in all seriousness, if you are interested, let, let me know in the comments below. Um, <clears throat> but they have developed really, really well. Their, their personalities have really come out. Jared is amazing. She's the most outgoing. I think if you've got, if, if there's a place with lots of animals and dogs and stuff, I think she's the best for it because she's fearless. Um, she likes to climb on your shoulder and just hang out. Harry is just loves sn snuggles. As soon as you'll see in the video, as soon as you go in, he just rolls on his side and then rolls on his back and he's doing all that pouring thing they do in, in midair, trying to get your attention for cuddles. And Baba Didi have come on leaps and miles. They were the two shyest ones at, at the start, but they've really developed. They love their cuddles and their playing and all that sort of good stuff. So I'm really chuffed with how happy and healthy uh, they all are. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to get, hopefully we'll get to find them some nice places to live forever. Um, like I've said before, we can't keep any. We've got um, an older cat, Molly. She's, I can't remember, 15, 14. She's not a massive fan of cats. Um, so it wouldn't be fair to her to introduce a little kitten that's just going to be jumping on her and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so so we'll get them rehomed to the next couple of weeks. The only bit of sort of badish news is about mum cat. Um, I haven't seen her for about five, six days now. Um, what's happened? What are my best guess? Obviously, we don't know. My best guess is, as you know, there's lots of gardens down the road, especially there's one massive garden that's completely overgrown. It's like a little mini forest. And I think my best guess is that she was part of a social group. We know there was other cats. There's obviously the dad, which is um, Scratch. And we've got Granny Cat, who we think's her mum. And we've seen a couple of others that she was friendly with. So it could be other litter mates or all that sort of thing. And I think there was probably a big social group of stray cats that probably live a few hundred metres away. And cats have territories. You'll know this if you've got a cat, usually your garden or your garden, the next garden, it'll be their territory. And I think what happened is mum cat got pregnant and decided that she needed a safe, quieter spot to give birth and raise the kittens. So she went looking and we discovered her and we fed her and she was like, oh, this is perfect. Because although the social group's great, there's always a bit of ruckus and stuff. And, and obviously when you're trying to look after babies, you probably don't want them in that atmosphere with that rivalries of the cats and stuff like that. And we do hear the occasional cat fight and all that sort of stuff. So she was 
because we never saw her before she was pregnant. So she just appeared pregnant. So I think she came looking, realized this was a good safe spot when, you know, the dry ski, ski slope and everything and found a little nest and we were feeding her. She went, this is perfect. Had the kittens um, and raised them with me and, and feeding them every day and stuff like that. And then when we took them um, for a, not too long, maybe a day or two, I'd hear a couple of times in the evening, you could hear her in the garden just sort of calling them, which is horrible, but you have to deal with that. Um, and then we discovered that she'd found, because they were living in the porch area and there's a windows next to the porch, we'd found that she'd discovered where the kittens were and she was sitting at, in the, at the window looking in on the kittens. Now, she, I opened the front door to see if she actually wanted to come in. My, my idea was to hopefully keep feeding her so she became friendly and then catch her and have her neutered. Um, was my end goal and then let her go again because um, I don't think she's ever going to become a, a pet cat to be honest um, she's too far gone um, but I thought get her neutered so we didn't have a spray of, of lots more kittens so she'd come visiting but that only lasted a couple of days and then she just seemed to accept that that was it now cool the kittens are gone um, and she came back for a couple of times for food I'd see her in the evening and then, and then she's gone and I'm assuming she's just gone back to the social group um, I probably I probably just see her occasionally now. I've seen Scratch a couple of times. I've seen Granny Cat a couple of times. But obviously, we I'd see him three times a day when I was feeding them. So a um, little bit sad. It's, I'll keep trying to hopefully get hold of Mum Cat and, and get her neutered and stuff like that, or even rehomed if it's possible. I'll keep an eye out for her. But I just sort of don't see it happening now. The worst thing is, obviously, there's a chance that she's going to now go and get pregnant again. Um and if that's the case, I imagine she'll come back because that would make the most sense. It's a safe space. You know, she gets fed and stuff, which won't be ideal, but we'll deal with it when it happens. Uh, hopefully we can stop that happening. But as you can see, the cats are growing very fast. They've got some fantastic personalities. If I had, if I had the option to, um, I'd definitely keep one, two, four. Um, but just with our elderly cat, it, she doesn't like cats, so it was it was never going to really be possible, and it's not fair to her. So there you go. I, I to end this, I just want to say a massive thank you. Um, I it's a completely random thing to appear on the channel that's predominantly football manager, um, but I love the fact that you guys have embraced it, and it feels like it feels like. You know, I know I make decent football manager videos and, and people like that. But the fact I can make something completely random and still thousands of you have watched, I, it means the absolute world to me. Because it kind of means like, oh, you like the same things I do and that you like me as opposed to you like football manager sort of thing, just football manager. So it absolutely means the world that you guys have taken the time to watch all these videos at one point i'll tell you a little story before we finish because this made me laugh in a stupid way um i mess i thought it, you know it's cost us a lot of money C kittens eat and poop a lot as you will know if you have four cats um and i thought you know what would be cool i will contact um whiskers the company and uh, just to see if they're interested in sponsoring a video because i thought actually that'd be really good um, just for clarity's sake, um, if a gaming company came to me and said that you wanted to sponsor my video, which they do often, once a week-ish, um, and I turned down pretty much every single one. But if, if I decided, it has to be a game I was interested in. So if somebody came to me with a football, man, a football game that I was interested in, I would be looking to charge somewhere between 500 and a thousand pounds for a video dedicated to them. Um, a few hundred quid if they wanted a shout out or a little sponsored spot, okay? And I thought, you know what would be cool? I'll contact, I DM'd on Twitter, Whiskers UK, and said, look, I've got this idea. Um, can you supply me with a bunch of kitten food? You know, not much. Let's say it's probably like 50 quid's worth of kitten wet food and dry food, maybe a couple of toys or whatever, or, or kitten treats. Um, give me a selection box of treats and I'll give you a shout out in a video. So I didn't ask for any money for it. Um, but I thought, like, it makes sense to them. This is a video about sponsoring stray kittens, a, a story of rescuing these homeless kittens. And I thought, giving them a shout And I said, I'll give you a shout out in every video. So ton of a ton of promotion that would, for three or four videos, would cost upwards of 
a thousand, two thousand pounds, I'm saying, just give me 50 quid's worth of food. I'll give you a shout out because that's what I just wanted to cover my costs, right? So I DM'd them with that whole plan, explaining everything. And they said they don't do donations. They, uh, I'm sorry, we already donate to a number of charities and um, we will not be uh, helping you out. And I'm like, and I reply back like, I'm not asking for a donation. I'm giving you a load of advertising for 50 pounds. It's not, it's not a donation at all. You're paying, you're getting really good value on free advertising on a really nice video series. And they just didn't reply. I'm like, what absolute idiots. Right, there we are. The Stray Cats. There might be another one if they're still here in, in three weeks time or whatever. But uh, thank you again for all the support on these videos. It's, it's meant a lot to all of us here. So, um, and I'm sure the cats have enjoyed being on the videos. They're famous after all. Um, but there you go. Thank you very much for your support. The cats have appreciated it. I've appreciated it. To be honest, the ad revenue for the Stray Cat Diaries has probably paid for maybe half the food. So you guys have helped with that anyway. So thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.